Hi, well, welcome everyone, and welcome to another one of these Von Art Live interviews. Uh, today I am joined by a very, very talented artist that I am actually very curious to learn more about because I've been following you, I think, for five and a half years now. And it's been really cool seeing your journey because uh, me and my friends talk about you actually often when we're talking about like artists we admire because you are one of those who are so multifaceted in what you're capable of not only working with, but even the conceptual side, what you're able to output is so different from one piece to the next. And it's been really cool watching your journey because I found you and then uh, it's like the year after you did your Inktober 2016 book, which was like the really long ink drawing that you turn into in, what are those called, accordion books? Yeah, accordion kind of, yeah. I thought that was insanely, not only clever, but wonderful. And, oh, that's right, I'm supposed to wait for the audio test as I'm like babbling right into it. But uh, it was so cool seeing that because after you kind of jumped into doing more color, and it wasn't just digital, it was also like watercolor and other mediums that you just seem so naturally gifted at <laughs> like it seemed like whatever medium was thrown your way you were able to handle it and not only handle it but handle it very very well so i'm not i'm gonna let you talk more and i'll let you introduce yourself before we even jump into any of the questions or the uh especially the user questions but i just know i'm very excited to talk with you today and thank you so much for joining me i am i feel very honored yeah thank you thank you so much it's super cool to be here and like Thanks again to like bringing me here. Uh, it's a it's a real pressure, and I'll be like looking forward. Since, since you told me uh, to do this, is like yeah, super cool. I, I really love yeah. because I also admire your work, and I know like we've been following each other for a long time. And uh, I mean, it's the first time we actually speak, and it's super cool. Uh, to yeah. Be <laughs> and thanks, and yeah, I mean, I know like we'll speak more about this, but about just. Just to say that about uh, that, I seem to manage every technique. That thing you said, I mean, at the <laughs> end it's like you you don't know how many I threw up in the trash. You're like, okay, no, okay, no. At the end, I mean, you know how it works, right? If you're not proud of something, you're not gonna share it. And at the end, it seems like, yeah, you're mm -hmm. big watercolors and you do well. It's like, yeah, uh, you've seen the drawing number twenty-eight, the first. 27 are in the <laughs> yeah. broken, right? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> well, Beatrice right. was also kind of mentioning that even your 27 are still great. You just don't see them as great. <laughs> I don't know. With, with Beatrice, it's, uh, it's funny because we both like complement each other a lot in a way that my, I would say like literally my strengths are her weaknesses and the other way around, like the, her strengths oh. are my weaknesses. So, because she's like really good at color and I'm more like always focused on design and shape. And and it's super easy that I admire what she does because she's like super good at what, at what I can't do. And, and the other way around, she's like, oh my God, your tiny sketches are great. And it's probably mm -hmm. because, I don't know, the 3D foundation or the line work, she, she really likes that from me. But then like wait for me to paint something and call her and she's like, no, no, wrong, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's a joke, but you, you understand that, right? Oh, for sure, I, I get that. I mean, trust me, I'm going to throw in some of my own questions throughout this because I am like yeah. genuinely interested in hearing some of the answers from you. But uh, the way that I always structure these is I always ask the 10 questions uh, first okay. that I ask every artist, and then we open up to the users. And Perfect. I'm sure we'll be tangenting left and right and throwing like sub questions, so... Uh, I hope you're ready for this because I know I am. <laughs> okay. You want. So, oh, and it looks like my audio actually worked. So I'm really glad because I felt so bad with Beatrice last week for the first 10 minutes. It was like slightly echoing. And I was like, oh, ten. But these, these seem to be working well. And everyone that I've been interviewing has them. I'm like, I'm just behind the curve. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Okay. So to start off, Danny, growing up, when did art seem to grab your attention? um nice question like it's remembering long time ago but i guess the first like relationship with art was through mainly two things uh one is like video games in the 90s and mm. the second is probably anime like tv anime shows japanese anime uh i i grew up here in spain with it's where, where i'm now and um yeah, I think 
Beer Games were the first real, real monthly magazine of beer games. And back yeah. in the, I don't know, early 90s, um, I, we wouldn't have internet or, you know. So um, every month I would buy that magazine. And, like, you know, in these BUM reviews of the new games, you will have one cover, like, one the, the one drawing of the game, right? Like, probably the main character or something. And that was, yeah. like, my, my input, my monthly input on, like, different artists of course i didn't know and i didn't care at that point because i was like nine year old or something like that i didn't know about who were the artists but i would trace every single drawing in the <laughs> magazine or like copy or try to i don't know i would just wanted to be that character right and so i remember like cutting and keeping those drawings are like a really like treasures because yeah i uh, i mean we didn't have much uh, like many other ways to just like I'm I'm, I'm speaking like I, I would have eight years old something like that so I was really yeah. uh, to go to museums right or appreciate that um, and I would go but I, I would get really bored probably <laughs> and and yeah and also yeah so I was saying yeah animes too especially uh, Dragon Ball and like Akira Toriyama in general mm -hmm. uh, here in Spain it was it was pretty cool because uh, we have a lot of that. I, I've spoken with like a lot of American people and it's really different in that. In those years, like we will have every, like a lot of animes. I don't know, maybe they probably were like cheaper to buy in a, like for local TV um, channels or something like that. I don't know why, but um, especially the local TV channels, the small ones, they had like all the afternoons full of anime and I would just like, it was like, I don't know, amazing. <laughs> and I was like really, really fan of uh, Dragon Ball and all the um, Toriyama, Doctor Slump, or like Dragon Quest. They would have also mm -hmm. an anime of Dragon Quest. Uh, and I guess, yeah, I wanted to draw all of that, right? But I had no idea about uh, like today, like how does that work or things like that. So I guess that's my first approach into that. I don't know. I mean, it's funny hearing you say this because I kind of see your work even lately kind of shift into more of like creating, I mean, I've been dying to see some of your art that you've been making lately for an actual video game, like a playable video game. And I'm curious because I try to read between the lines, but is that actually being made into a game? Like the sketches that you made with that lineup of characters? Or is that more of like a test um, demo for yourself? Um, so you mean more like whenever I um, upload uh multiple characters that seem to belong to a universe let's say yes and there was like you did some 3d ones oh, and... okay 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 so yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 okay there's two things like one is that every time i draw like characters that are like i don't know like a group of characters that belong together somehow it's more mostly an exercise to me so mm. it, it's cool because it's how i started kind of de developing a portfolio is like hey I, I don't have experience i'm gonna fake it right i didn't fake it like for real but i would just upload characters as if i were um working for mm -hmm. this video game right so i would do things that seem to belong to a project but it, there's no project uh behind um but then there's this 3d character you're, you're talking about that is uh yeah from uh something that i've been developing uh it's it's very young uh thing so i'm just having fun for now uh with a friend but yeah, we're trying to put together a prototype of a video game, but uh, mainly like um, it's been just like the same kind of exercise, just like putting uh, environments and characters together that seem to belong to to uh, to a place. But most of the time, the answer would be no. It's just like it's just the cover, right? It's just like yeah. playing to uh, develop something. It's one of my like favorite ways to draw, let's say to like do series of things uh, where I'm kind of uh, creating something together, but also practicing a specific thing probably in the background, like, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I, I love working that way. Actually, I was noticing the other day, like the website and it, you would see like nine drawings, like nine different ones, nine different ones. It's like, okay, uh, I, <laughs> it seems like I work by series. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it must have 
been my misinterpretation because I, I feel like I saw your little blue character in a little environment that you painted. And I'm, I thought it was 3D. Maybe it wasn't. And my impression was, oh, he's like secretly working on this game and it's going to be unveiled in like five years. <laughs> but... <laughs> so, no, no, no. But I know, I know what you mean. That one was, um, it was not a 3D, but it, uh... it would seem like I would just like paint it really, really like a 3D. Uh, but yeah, that's the same universe that I'm like secretly developing a video game. Yes. <sighs> but it's not something that it takes um it's not it's, it's never been like priority right it's been yeah. like, oh, for now just having fun and see how it goes because uh you know what happens when you uh force like something it would feel more like a work instead of having fun and then you would mm -hmm. feel like this heavy weight of the commitment right and it's like oh, let's have fun for now so well, that's because why you, I'm not like. Yeah. Well, and you like, do have a full time job, for, so for you, time is kind of of the essence. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's the eternal balance, right? So at the end, mm -hmm. trying to find time for yourself versus working for people, and luckily, people and sadly is are them who gives you money to eat, right? So you have to do it. You have yeah. to work for them, um, but yeah, uh, it's been, it's been. I mean, it's been, and it's, it's gonna always be a fight between those things. Yeah. Well, and I like guess, I, yeah. I'm pretty sure I saw because you work at the Montreal Square Enix. Was that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm curious because as a kid, uh, I wanted to work for Squaresoft so badly because Final Fantasy X was my favorite game and then like Kingdom Hearts I thought was amazing and I just assumed I'd be working for them. So I want to hear, what is your experience actually working for Square Enix? Um, I mean, it's been like one of the, like, I don't know, most beautiful moments of my life. Like just getting there and like also meeting all the people there. It's less like now reviewing it like in retrospective is less about those because i i'm also fan of uh, all the final fantasies and like you know square enix in general mm -hmm. uh i mean you know like the big big games the big fishes of square enix are being developed in japan so you wouldn't go straight away to develop the next final fantasy right so that division in montreal it's more focused on uh, mobile and it's it's really amazing, but I mean that you wouldn't breathe all the time the Final Fantasy mode because <laughs> it's not what they do there, right? Also because yeah. they're the, um, uh, the Square Enix and uh, Eidos, the Tomb Raider company, they're yeah. like working pretty close together. So uh, like to say it with like with a few words, you would see more posters and statues of Lara Croft than uh, I don't know, uh, Cloud Strife from Final Fantasy VII, right? It's more like, yeah. but yeah, I don't know. It was, it was really cool. Uh, it's it's amazing feeling to work there, uh, to see the logo and the, the company that you've been like fan of mm -hmm. so many years, right? Yeah. But I mean, do you enjoy working on, I know like you usually can't talk about what projects you're working on, but have you enjoyed mm -hmm. the process of having a full-time career um, basically being an artist, which I think a lot of the people watching and listening are kind of curious if like a full-time job versus being an independent illustrator or like an animation artist or a 3D modeler, like what has your experience been with that? Um, well, I, I, of course I've enjoyed a lot. I mean, I think it's for now, uh, thinking about working for a company, it's the best thing, the best uh, job I've had, like by far. Mm -hmm. um, but it's true that no matter how good the job is, there's uh, it's always you always want your own time, right? There's people that it's completely fine with just like not having that, or or they just not. I don't mean not having that. Uh, I mean just like they feel like fulfilled by working for a big company, and and it's it's great, right? But to yeah. me, no matter who is the client, let's say, I will always miss a bit of um, like closing the door and drawing drawing only for myself, right? Because it's yeah. my favorite thing to do. And um, it's, they always like, they always leave you time, right? Because you basically 
work for eight hours, not 12, right? So you always have time, but of course projects, big projects are like really demanding on your like mind and your, yeah, efforts. So sometimes uh, you would enter, enter in that uh, dynamic of just like going back home and you just wanna lay down in the couch and don't think, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And uh, keeping yourself in that loop for a long time, at the end, it's just like, I don't know, you will feel like you need a change, right? Um, yeah. But in general, um, I mean, to me, I would totally recommend to everybody to do that. You understand so, so many things when you work for big teams, right? How they, I don't know, it's, it's really... I use, I'm working now um, alone and I use a lot of the things that I've learned there, even if it's from myself to myself, because they just, I don't know, those companies like Square Enix that are like so good, they, they, they've they thought already about a lot of things that you think they are a problem. And it's like, oh, how are we going to do that? And it's like, yeah, that's done this way. Or we have a department for that, mm. that only thinks about, and it's like, that's smart. You feel all the time discovering like, this is great. This is super cool. And I, I didn't even know some like, I don't know, positions or decision who made what decisions and things like that. And it's super, um, I don't know, super good to have uh, done that. Uh, but yeah, you always miss the part of, I don't know, working for you. I yeah. Guess. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that's kind of great because I, I always get mixed reviews on whether they people like working full time or not. And it's always kind of encouraging for me to hear even like big companies for an artist to like be like, you know what? Yeah, I really do enjoy it here. The, the company is doing great things and um, I appreciate them. So that's actually really good. I, to hear. Yeah, 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 totally. I, I would say it a lot of times. I, I really enjoy the um, like most. I'd say most, but it's all the companies have been. Of course, you always like you know you, you're working you always see something that is not exactly as you would want yeah okay but uh, in mm -hmm. general like uh, and, and it's it's also you advance so much in your own individual career by doing that because you make friends that are aligned with your i don't know priorities right and that makes you speed up and catch some energy for the future too or like I don't know, hang with people to draw that you have met in your company, even if you're not there anymore. And uh, yeah, I, I love being alone, but at the same time, there's like this huge uh, input of good energy, right? When you relation, right? you have a relationship with people and that you oh, speak about sure. the same things and yeah. And it's like reciprocated and it like, and sometimes it can make you feel like I have to step up my game and I have to, uh, rise to the occasion of what all these other artists are outputting and I want to make sure I'm hitting that same level yeah, yeah I've always totally enjoyed totally. that totally, um, yeah. but going back to our 10 questions the next one <laughs> is oh this is one of my favorites and it's can we see some work from three five or ten years ago uh, if you have any from even past then saved uh, can you show us what you got so I have to say that um... I checked before the interview because I know you knew that question and I checked and I have uh, the, the like oldest I have, I think it's from eight, nine years ago. So oh. it's not like, <laughs> let's go. Yeah. Um, do you, uh, is it okay if I share the screen, for example? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Just let me know when you can see yourself. I see me. Two times. Okay. Get me oh, out of there. Okay. I'm going to yes okay so first I'll I'll check out the website because I think yeah you mentioned like first like something like three years ago and that's you know time flies and that's like yesterday literally so uh, I think those these are like childhood week uh, and if I'm not mistaken this is childhood week 2017 so those are uh, those are three years ago or like probably yeah three something like that uh, even like yeah actually i can maybe yeah i had the folder here so this is like childhood week from uh yeah from I'm gonna actually check yeah 2017 right so yeah this is like from three years ago for example um this was already with the ipad and like uh i don't know like 
three years is nothing, and I don't feel like I've changed a lot with uh, within that range, <laughs> right? Uh, or something like more like the topic I draw or something like that, but like you won't feel that change of oh my god, this is like so ugly, right? That that you see <laughs> when 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 you see drawings like really old. Then you said like uh, like I don't know ten years like I don't know I'm gonna just like keep going down and yeah this is great <laughs> this is like probably minimum six years ago and it was a moment where i i was mm. like oh my god i don't know how to draw faces i'm gonna just like um just practice that uh, i think let me check yeah Oops. i'm actually gonna uh, just check the dates because it's probably the easiest way to see the I'm gonna, I'm yeah gonna well, this video so we can see this it is, no this is there we go sorry Oh no! I just I, I I upped the bandwidth so that we can see these pictures as clearly as possible because I I want to okay, see them okay. in their full resolution. So we're good. We're good. Okay. No, yeah. Nothing. Just like this is like uh, four or five years ago. Um, I would just like uh, yeah, I like try to do more and more faces. Like this is again one of those series I was I was we were talking about about yeah. uh, just like keep keep going with one topic that. Maybe if it doesn't have much sense about that story or background, it just like keeps, keeps me busy and like um, like thinking that I'm learning and that's like something that really makes me happy. Oh, this is a funny one. This is a funny one actually. <laughs> this is like a first uh, kind of portrait maybe uh, for Beatrice. This is like 2015, so we're getting like back in time. And I, I, I mean, I see this now and I don't like it much, but ah! I mean, you know, it, yeah. So this has like five years old and, uh, I think, I think maybe here is like really old ones. Uh, yeah, this is from the sc school. Like I, I've only, uh, studied one year of like, I studied a bit more like uh, small courses and things, but like literally in the at school uh, only one year and like oh wow i don't know this was like acrylic uh practice or something like that uh and it was like you know that movie like take on king Crit? oh yeah so it was like obviously after watching that now that i see the drawing um and the event so it's almost 10 years um and this was the these were the exercises of like different techniques like this is the like one single color and like yeah you know like kind of watercolor um oh this has such of a like that fun style it um like similar to the machinarium game or i always mispronounce yeah it. totally um, yeah yeah part yeah yeah you're right part because of um the shapes but also it's super like brown as that game right yeah it just yeah, he, yeah, the yeah. way that you experiment with shape i always find so intriguing because <laughs> Like each of the, even these that you're showing me, they all are like different mediums. And that's what I kind of mentioned in the beginning. And yet they're still so good and they still feel very much you. And I just always felt like you're one of those artists that just have this confidence to them in like whatever challenge is thrown your way, you're just going to knock it out of the park. So for me, this is just so nice seeing your old work because I'm like, yep, yep, that sound, that looks about right. <laughs> yeah, but you, you're right that uh, honestly, the key word there is confidence because i don't think it's like a crazy different world between different medias right but uh i've been always kind of confident even if i mean i i have the same struggles as everyone like hey i don't like my own drawings or like i don't like my <laughs> old drawings like uh -huh. that's never gonna end right but i remember um okay well let me uh, I'll come back to that, but let me see if I have something like older, but I don't think so. This is probably the older. No. Also, I love some of these folder names. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for the, I don't know. I just end up saying, yeah, all the time. No, I don't. Yeah, because I, I switched to Mac at some point. And uh, so that was like about 10 years ago, a bit less. And I, yeah. uh, I don't, uh, there's some hard drives around, but uh, I don't even have them because also, you know, I, I moved uh, a while ago. So let me find you now. Where are you? <laughs> so, I'm um, lost. 
you should be here, but I don't know where. Oh, probably, no. Oh, probably here. Oh, the next tab over. Sorry? Oh, there yeah. you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll so, get two Tims out of here, though. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what, what I was saying, but... Yeah, well, we moved, and like, some of the stuff I still like, don't have like the location, but yeah, I'm probably have older, but nothing much older than that because yeah, it's really old. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Well, I no, that was great. Even drawing that. that. Here you go. You go. No, no, I was just saying that I haven't been uh, drawing and saving what I draw uh, that like that much time uh, in a way that I just would I would just like draw and like leave it there probably my mom threw it away uh, or <laughs> save it maybe but i mean that i was i wasn't like really caring much about drawings until i started like working i would just like i don't, yeah. know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know i know i i always felt like one of those neurotic kids that i would take the paper from my dad's printer um and that's what i drew on always as a kid was like printer paper and then if i ever felt my drawing was good enough i put it in like protective uh, sleeves that you would normally have for like schoolwork and then I had a binder and it was like my binder of drawings and like they weren't that great but as a kid I'm like I got I have to protect these but now uh I literally leave my drawings like everywhere I don't protect any of them as well as I should because but, it's just constantly uh, going you know yeah yeah but it's it's really good that you did that uh, I would really uh want to have some of or try to mm -hmm uh create a robot as cool as that one and i don't have any any of that um and so you did great actually i would pay <laughs> for that <laughs> i would pay I mean, for some of my like i still have them and sometimes when i look at it it's kind of like a cringe embarrassing moment because you're like oh yeah <laughs> and you can kind of tell like what you're ripping off or what you're trying to be like unique and original but clearly it's just like a pokemon or a digimon or whatever but it was that uh... i was into but it's so interesting that, that you say that because at the same time, it's already it's already has some of the things that you keep doing, right? Like could yeah. be, I don't know, small mistakes or small struggles or just like shapes that naturally happen uh, when you draw. Mm -hmm. and, and even like 10 and 15 years ago, and you see those now in the same way. It, it comes up a bit better, but it's kind of the same shape. So I don't know. I, I would yeah. recognize that. Yeah. No, I definitely think, like, when I look at my drawings now, I, I really like uh, long, um, elongated proportions, and I'm like, that must have been from Digimon. And the way that I draw my eyes, I always love drawing a double iris or, like, a double pupil ring, and I'm like, that's from Kingdom Hearts. And it's funny how much of that has bled into my work now, and I'm so, like, conscious of it. Uh, but I, I wasn't in my early 20s because I think that's when a lot of artists, especially in like the younger stage, they are like subconsciously pulling from what attracts them to what they're drawing. And then as you start to like really analyze your work, you start to like pick it apart like, oh, that's from this. And like, you know, yeah. but it's funny how what you're saying is a lot of it does come back to your childhood and what attracted you was attracted to you as a you know a very young age and how it's like pulled into your adulthood and into what you create uh growing up so okay. i think that's great and even like looking behind you i'm like looking at all these action figures and these uh mangas and i'm like yep that yep. looks about right <laughs> i uh is the first uh i mean we like we bought a house and it's the first time i really stop and set up a place like as i want so but um or like I'm in the studio, but um, I I knew deep down that it was temporary, right? In a way that I was renting a place, so it's mm -hmm. not gonna be uh, my room forever. And this time is the first time it's like, okay, I'm gonna spend the time on uh, putting all those things. And um, it's super cool. It's It brings back a lot of memories that only trigger, uh, I don't know, cool things, right? Um, and some of yeah. the things are like new. Uh, I'm not like having all the comic books from when I was little, but some of them I re I bought them again to to have them or like things like that. Yeah, it's it's cool to surround yourself with what you like. That's a summarize, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> That's exactly that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So going back to the the questions here, because uh, sometimes I have a tendency to like keep asking the artist questions that aren't part of the ten, and then we keep tangenting. So. 
I gotta like rein myself in from time to time. <laughs> so the next question is, so what piece do you feel defined your growth and progress from seeing yourself as more of an amateur artist to a professional? Maybe it was a specific time that you kind of like really just noticed that you made like a jump, a significant jump of some kind. Yeah, I think uh, it was around around um, that time in the the one year I studied here mm -hmm. in a, it's a private school uh, in in Spain, um, and I went there. I was okay. I'll start from the beginning. I would just like pass by the door every day uh, because of something else, and I would just like wanting to go there and I, I save some money, and at the end I signed in to to study. But like I was like 23 or 24 already, um, yeah. and and anyway, that moment when I started going there, uh, and and actually, are those pieces that I sh just showed, like that little brown labyrinth and all of that. But in in that in that year, I realized like one of the biggest lessons that made me think that I could work and like actually make my life from that. And it's as simple as that. Um, I would have to put a lot of hours <laughs> into drawing, right? Um, and it's yep. like, yeah, it's so silly and so obvious, but <laughs> it was. I always remember that because I I don't have a lot of patience, right? And I would just sit down, draw, finish, and get up, right? And like stand and go somewhere else. And to me, one draw was the first time that drawings were like a bit more similar to small projects right like you could sit down do some planification start and not fin doing you know like those moments where you're spending so many hours in a drawing that you you say okay you know this is coming up coming up nicely i have to do a proper hand i'm gonna delete that one because it's super <laughs> ugly and it's like you know the first time that you actually show the hands of the characters in, instead of putting them in the pockets yeah right? behind the back uh, yep. you know yeah so it's the first time that i would just like pay the proper respect to drawings right and it's like okay i and i would become a bit more picky with my own work for good right like mm, i'm not gonna leave that like that even if i have to spend uh, a couple more hours and that means I would start seeing how, because that's how we actually work. We mm -hmm. we put like a threshold of quality, and we really fight for it, right? And at the beginning, I would I wouldn't just not care. I would just like okay, done another one. And by that moment, with those like pieces that are not like very elaborated, but those ones that you've seen with uh, color, I don't know, are a bit longer, right? Are more than one one time sitting down and. I remember that as a fact, and I I tell that in the workshops all the time. Like the day I realized that uh, drawing takes time, and it's like, yeah, I mean, it's so obvious, but at the same time, <laughs> you have to acknowledge that that that. And I don't mean practice. I mean that most sometimes it's because you've been practicing a lot, but some other times it's because you're like stubborn enough to not allow yourself to leave that eye as it is or that hand as it is it's like no you mm -hmm. know what i'm gonna erase it and do it again and if not i'm gonna erase it and do it again and at the end you just i don't know share the drawing it's like oh your skill to draw hands is amazing it's like well i don't know i just tried <laughs> until i liked but i didn't give up until i liked actually right mm -hmm. i think there's a lot of like challenging yourself as an artist that really helps you grow and the ones that I see like just that really like progress fast are the ones that are very critical of their own work. And they can look at what is um, not perfect in their own work and what could be improved upon and then tackle it with the next piece. And kind of like what you're saying with the hands, I think at some point every artist has that moment where they're like, you know what, I'm going to take my hands out of the pockets. And <laughs> like there's yeah. more of those moments, like similar ones throughout your career and like those kind of define you as an artist because if you then take that challenge on, from that point forward, you're gonna be a stronger artist because you're, uh, you know, well, well, one, you're pulling the hands out. Uh, but then every other decision from then henceforth, maybe there's another thing of like, you know what, I'm gonna have the hair be shown or not in a ponytail or, you know, 
yeah, I'm going to draw a background on this piece, or I'm going to try coloring, you know, things like that. And that only leads to, I think, an improvement um, from before. Totally. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, and I also remember kind of the internal fight between, because you, you always think you're not ready to share your things, right? Or to just work as an artist. Mm -hmm. uh, you always think. Um, and I mean, like, coming back to your point is that I also remember the moment where I thought, okay, and you know what, I don't know many things, but I'm gonna learn them while I go not, I don't know, because not like being frustrated all the time because of the things that I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and, and that, that take all basically, <laughs> right. And uh -huh. it's like, because you, at the end, you actually, you actually know things. It's just that you're frustrated because you don't know some others, but I've, I've been in that position of, um, I don't know, like putting too much of that criticism into myself, like so much that mm -hmm. you don't, you get like completely paralyzed and you can't, okay, I don't know, I'm gonna do one line. What, what if he's wrong? It's like, you know, like you have to move on and say, okay, I'm gonna improve while doing mistakes actually and keeping, keeping going, right? Oh, for sure. Well, and it's funny because I think this what leads to the imposter syndrome where like you pull the hands out of pockets, right? And then the more that you do that, I feel artists or the people that follow you kind of set this expectation of, upon you of like quality or like this standard. And I think that's why when you start a drawing, you start questioning yourself or like questioning, wait, am I this good? Or like, can I do that? And yeah. I, 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 you're one of those artists, so I just feel like maybe never has that because I feel like you go into things so strong. Um, it's it's very inspiring because sometimes I'll question myself, especially on larger pieces, and uh, it, I think that can be the downfall is when you set this weird level of expectation for yourself because then you're not enjoying the process as much. And I'm relearning to you know don't worry about whatever standard is like set for me. Like just enjoy what you're doing and uh, do the best of your ability. Totally, yeah. Um, it's it's um, really important to know why you draw. Um, yes. Because it's basically, I mean, it sounds really like philosophical, but it's basically, hey, what do you like from drawing? Why do you draw? What What's that thing that it's making you happy, right? Uh, because mm -hmm. that makes the imposter syndrome like really go away right of course you always have the tiny bit of imposter syndrome if you deep down know like oh I, as you were saying like the the eyes oh i know where i first saw that and i keep <laughs> doing those eyes that's super, uh, that you were talking about it goes yeah. away in the moment you enjoy and i don't know it, it's it's a direct consequence of enjoying that triggers your curiosity right and you start wanting more things and oh what if i try i try this instead of uh, instead of going that way that you just said like uh oh can i do this is this allowed right it's more like one, once you start allowing yourself to do things it's like you know i'm gonna go crazy mm -hmm. and if you don't like it it's fine and it turns out that at the end people loves like a lot and you could already tell when someone is enjoying the drawing right when he's oh, completely free 100%. and like doing you know what i'm gonna do that and and i don't know i, I it's but it's hard to, it's like this social pressure and also you wanna i don't know you know your weaknesses and your strengths right and it's hard to yep. get rid of that yeah it's like one of those things that you constantly kind of have to watch because it's like slowly slipping and you got to just keep recatching it and keep like reminding yourself in a way but, but um, you said something, and I, just super quick, you said something oh, about yeah. uh, that you like that I just change the again the medium and variate things, and it's funny because um, the every like there's like many different like people, right? Like uh, different personalities, and I can't do what you do, like completely. I can't. It's when I see one of the one of those like big pieces that you're talking about I admire that because I'm unable to do that I can't I'm not, what you don't I know, think you could uh, maybe you technically could. I, uh, maybe technically I would do something cool but mentally yeah. I can't be 
uh, I don't know. It's just a matter of like what you like and what you don't. And I, when I see people working on big pieces, having a whole like uh, painting like half done for months, I really admire that, and I want to do that. But I, I'm not good at that. I'm and maybe in the future I just like work on that patience and I work on uh, getting used to paint uh, the same thing, not the same, but like the same drawing for like long sessions, but. Yeah, it's it. I find that really like hard, and I admire that from from like you or from people that uh, works on those pieces. And it's like, oh, this is amazing! Look what this guy has accomplished. Yeah, and and I I don't know, you know, like it's well, I'm kind of curious personalities because uh, I I was kind of talking to uh, B last week about this too, where I I think why I don't switch mediums a lot is literally because I think I have conditioned myself to cater my instagram to what i create now and i i'm i'm thankfully i'm in a better headspace to like try to break from that because i really want to try doing stained glass and things that aren't just pencil drawings but i think for the longest time i associated so much uh, maybe even subconscious my feed or what it will like i don't want to disrupt my like just, let's say like 15 pencil drawings with like all of a sudden a stained glass one and then a watercolor one but i'm realizing though because i'm making it so uh, limited I'm limiting myself then and if I want to go in a different direction I should just allow myself to I shouldn't have to worry about you know will this affect my business will this affect the way my Instagram looks as like a portfolio and uh, I think the I, I'm sure you don't even have to think about this too often because I think you are one of those artists that just follow your your path and it doesn't feel guided by uh, either like a monetary gain or a follower gain or anything like that. And I think it's one of these struggles of the modern age with artists that um, yeah. we cater a lot of what we do based on how we're going to present it. And that's been something that I'm definitely trying to do a different medium or if it's different subject matter and you're able to tackle it so, so beautifully. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's, um, yeah, it's a complex conversation in a way that uh, yeah. it, it, we, we can't predict like what people is going to think right about what we do but I can tell you already that by doing that that you, you're saying that like variating so much and like just following my heart let's say uh, I've seen a lot of times that I just uh, share something and it just goes super bad right because it's not your style right it's not what people is used to see from your feet and uh, I can I can tell you that I, I really remember the experience after that Tinktober accordion uh, book that you were speaking yeah. about in the beginning um, people would think about me like the guy that draws ink in a huge sketchbook right that's like uh yeah. it, like i don't know it, the first color drawing i i have to actually go down and check the feed because it's still there but the the next drawing after inktober was the worst in my feed right because <laughs> people would expect to see another ink and oh. this time bigger and this time mm -hmm. you know um but and that happens to me constantly but now by doing that so many times that's what my account is about let's say right it's or like become expected so almost people, to change yeah people also get used i don't know to me at least it's super rich to share that because i'm speaking now more about the struggles and and the path the, like the the journey i'm following than the final pieces it's more like i'm trying this because of that and i actually but this is like in my case i actually share more with the people when i try to explain uh, why I was just going away from that and going towards that other thing um, mm -hmm. and it probably honestly it probably has if you, we have to think in with just cold mind it probably has less likes but I love I like more the conversation in my case right I like to speak about those things and I don't know um, but you should totally do it you're gonna love it <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I don't mean like just don't go crazy tomorrow and do like whatever, yeah. right? But uh, I, there's nothing, I don't know. I, I, I felt super good when I said out loud, like through, in this case, through Instagram, I, I want to do this and I'm going to try it and you're going to see it. 
people is super nice when they follow your path of learning mm -hmm. something, right? Same that happened with the 3D. I started some 3D and and I don't know, it's it's super cool to to uh, share uh, the thought that, hey guys, do you want to see more 3D? I'm doing some and people is like, I don't know, yes, of course. And it's like, yeah, thank you. It's super cool, right? That you have that and because then you're happy to, to share it, yeah. Yeah, I think that's been a lot of um, kind of what you were saying. You can kind of tell when an artist is happy doing their work. And it's usually what I see is when an artist creates without free from the constraints, especially of social media. And maybe I'm on it just too much, um, but I definitely can kind of see like which artists I feel are being or feeling that pressure of, you know, maintaining this look of their feed um, versus artists that are like, you know what, I'm going to try this today and I'm going to share it. And if people like it, great. If they don't, that's OK, too. And there, there is some level of confidence that also comes with that of like, I don't really care if people don't like this. And that's always been, I guess, something on like, not in the forefront of my mind, but something in the back of, I always want to create something that um, will be well received on some level. I think because I'm so critical mm -hmm. of work. And I think when I see you create, it's more of, do I enjoy what I'm creating? Um, yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, but you're right in everything at, at, at the same time <laughs> well thank you i no no totally I, I think the same but there's one thing that i don't share and it's that i do care a lot about people liking it or not mm. but it doesn't feel like it to me just because i mean even if i say the like loudest i can that i care about what people think about my work because that's being a human you want to be liked that's nature right but even with that and i can say like clear and loud there's one priority that it's on the top that it's me it's not that i don't like them the, the people liking my work is that the first person is me and then of course the people right but if yeah. i feel like going in one direction you i i always uh, end up respect, like doing it because I it's me. I mean, it's the first person I have to impress, not impress, you know, like the first person I have to be okay with. It's myself. So at the, at the end, it's like, of course, I like to be like to get out of likes or things like that, right? And of course, like it happened so many times that I just upload something super excited. It doesn't go as good as I wanted and I just don't like mm -hmm. that much that drawing anymore and that's that's also you know like that happens to everyone and it happens also to me and sometimes is mm, true sometimes it's not right sometimes you you have to be able to defend one drawing that went like really bad on the like on instagram for example yeah. <laughs> um but it's like yeah yeah you know i like it. it's a bit tricky yeah it's funny how, like what you said, if you don't get a lot of likes, your association then with your drawing becomes tainted. And that's happened to me before, especially even during uh, Draw Halloween, like way back when. Um, my favorite one of the 31 I did was one of the least liked. And I still look at that drawing. I look at it with such, you know, I, I really loved working. I thought I did a great job. I thought it was creative. But because it was received so poorly, I don't, I don't, I see it in a different light now. And that's another yeah. thing that no one's really taught how to manage or deal with. And it's so new. It's so modern that, you know, as artists, we're all kind of these guinea pigs experimenting social media for the first time. Yeah. And that's and, one of the things that, you know, I've become very cognizant of. And uh, you're right. And that shouldn't be the way that we look at art, especially if you really enjoy it. You can't let it become tainted because it wasn't received well. Yeah, totally. Uh and we tend to think about the audience as, I don't know, a thing, a big thing, right? And even mm -hmm. if you have like huge numbers, it's a, it's a type of audience, right? In a way that, for example, one thing that surprised me a bit is like, I don't even remember which drawing, but one drawing that I, I shared through Instagram went like really bad or like just bad, I don't remember. And then I shared it by Twitter and it was like amazing, right? And oh. it turns out that I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna stop and try to understand and analyze because I like to draw, not to, right? I'm not a social media analyst, right? Yeah. But um, 
but I do feel like the 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 drawing was like a bit more video gamey, right? And in Twitter, the audience is a bit more towards game development in in my case, right? And so it was like super well received, and not that much on Instagram. And with that, I just mean that it's huge audience, but it's still it has its own personality, right? Like depending mm -hmm. on the people, and it's it's different. You 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 just I don't know, uh, like every social media uh, like uh, site or like platform has a different kind of audience, different kind of tastes. So at the very end, yeah, it's like, yeah, keep that in mind. But yeah, the big, big audience is only one and it's you probably, right? Well, it's funny because when you said the analyzing the Instagram stuff, I definitely feel like I'll put on this hat and I'm like, okay, I'm going to analyze these statistics. I'm going to figure out what worked, what didn't work, which hashtags made it more popular or why this one was commented or saved more. And then I usually come to the conclusion that I don't actually know. And uh, I just wasted a good amount of time <laughs> because yeah. I'll spend like... I'll, you know, w too much time on this to talk with artists and I love hearing them. So it's, I gotta like pull it back on track it from time to time. Please, please uh, do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the next question is, is there a piece that you have done that you have a personal connection with that stands out amongst the rest of your work? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to check my website. I don't have this prepared at all, but, um, like one that when you think of if I died tomorrow, what one would I want to be like representing me as an artist? I know, oh, kind of a hard yeah. question, kind of a loaded one. <laughs> no, 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 I, I get it, I get it. But uh, oh, it's really hard. It's really, really hard to me. Um, I mean, you know what happens, right? Like uh, I tell you like uh, 1,000 1, times, I don't know, and like I'll think about that and then like uh just right after finishing the interview is like oh, this yes. is the piece right uh, you know but mm -hmm. um i don't know i guess would be something maybe like okay. well i don't know if you're like me i always think i i haven't created it yet and uh, um, yeah that's a good approach actually right but <laughs> but I don't know if you always, I, I think I have a little bit of that neurotic thought of, well, okay, I got to prepare something that will be, once I die, I can be proud to be like, this was my masterpiece. And I'm, I'm working on this like five foot drawing that's really complicated. And I, I don't know why I feel like I have to force these things. I don't know if I'm that type of artist, but I'm like, okay, this will be the thing that if I die, I could be remembered for. Um, but now, okay. as I'm getting older, I'm realizing I don't really care that much anymore if I'm remembered after I die for what I do. Uh, because if okay. I just have fun drawing now, that's what really counts because I'll be dead anyways. Yeah, to, I mean, totally. I mean, if we pick the just like super logical side, you, we know we're not going to care after we, we're dead. Right? Mm -hmm. But but you also think about that uh, because it's like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's also funny like fun to think uh, that those things because it makes you like have a huge perspective of who you are let's say yeah uh, and it's it's nice to i mean of course we don't care I'm, I'm not gonna be alive so i don't care right but uh it's also fun to let you go a bit and, okay i'm gonna think a bit about this but i have an answer i think <gasps> okay it would be can you see the screen right yes i think it would be something like this one i guess uh it's um mm. sorry not not this one um to me it represents a lot of things um and it's it's what i don't know how to say it but what i want people to see in me when when they see my drawings is like uh like this wonder this sense of wonder and like exploring uh and, and like uh you know, if I had to, I mean, you mentioned that you were like a huge fan of Final Fantasy X. Oh, favorite game of all and, time. Um, <laughs> okay, so for the people that doesn't know, like in that game, the, the main character gets like transported to a new reality, let's say, like this, like super, super, like from one moment to the other, not yeah. like him... Not like him trying to open a portal or trying to travel. It's just like suddenly everything is new, right? And it's fantastical. It's like 
it's new and like amazing, right? Uh, and I, I, I would play a lot to that game too. And I would literally like close tight my eyes every night to try to make that happen and wake up in the morning <laughs> in, a, in a place like that, right? And like, I would train that skill every, like all the time, trying to just like, I'm gonna make it tonight, right? And coming back to the question, uh, this to me is something like the like could be a bit of their uh, represent visual representation of that image, right? Of, of sorry, yeah. of that thought, uh, like new place to discover that obviously is not our uh, reality, let's say, kind of. And yeah. I don't know, it summarizes pretty good that that feeling, I guess. Like as I showed you before, like the piece that made me think about. Uh, becoming professional about this is more uh, about just like pure feeling of representation of the work. It could be something like that, like transporting you to a different place or something. And that's one of my favorites thinking about that. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I, I love that answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Beatrice says in the comments, you're never going to die. <laughs> oh, we know that we have a plan, but I mean, that's a really secret one. We'll have <laughs> On how to stay alive forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I actually, to, that's that's the truth. Yeah. Uh, this kind of bleeds into the next question, which is, how do you hope people see your work? Um. Yeah. It really. It. I mean. It, it. To me, it's totally something about that. Um. That feeling of uh, like coming back to the Final Fantasy is what I. Like having in mind the, the context, which is mm -hmm. learning and approaching art through uh, animes, mangas, and um, video games, it's like nothing related with reality, right? Like I, I do care about a lot of things, but I discovered really late the, like, what's the name? I don't know how to call it, but just like, uh, pointing out problems in society through art or things like that. I've never been aware of that in my early, nothing at all. I would just be like, oh, this kid has a super cool sword and he's going to be the evils, right? Like, oh, yeah. Um, and so to me, that still uh, translate like in every drawing, right? It's, it's super rare that I draw like, I don't know, like a uh, urban tribe character like hey this skater guy i, I don't know i it doesn't come uh, naturally from me so i i guess i hope people get a bit transported to another place when they see my my drawings uh there's like a thing there's a thing that i always try to do that is uh trying to um make you ask questions when you see the drawing but they don't they don't have an answer right it's just like who's this yeah. guy why is this guy and I, actually i think you you do that a lot in your drawing right in your drawings uh it's like forcing that and like balancing the familiar and and the uncommon to for you to be in that middle place where you start thinking where does this guy lives or uh is this weapon part of his job or whatever right like whatever yeah and that's part of transporting you to another place because it means clearly that the guy is not common to you. It's not like a guy you could find in the street. Um, so I hope I always have that as a bit of that and people see that uh, in my work because it's at the end what triggers my true like inspiration, right? When I sit down and like, what do I do? I just like go away pretty far, right? Instead of looking around, it's more like, okay, let's, I don't know, try to uh, imagine this new universe or something like that. So I guess I want to play that game that you haven't made <laughs> because I think your world is just so, it has such an intrigue to it. And um, even it, as me, like I, I see so much art every day. I'm on Pinterest for like half hour, at least every day. I'm on Instagram for an hour every day. And uh, your art specifically stands out as like something I'm intrigued by. Like I want to, I want to explore that more. So I just from the way you answered that, I'm like, yeah, that's definitely spot on. I think how people see your work and a lot of my <laughs> art friends, when we talk about you specifically, that's kind of the same um, theme that, you know, goes around is your work definitely has this transformative feeling. 
and uh, just know that you're very you're very well respected in my art circle of friends. Oh, cool. oh, thanks, <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh uh, so then the next question kind of is one that I'm very curious about, and same one I was talking to B too, because the artists that I interview that have full time jobs, I'm I'm always very curious about this. So the question is. How do you balance the dual life of either running a business or working a full-time job and creating without money intention on your own and creating art that's purely for yourself? Yeah. Oh my God. That's a good one in a way that mm-hmm. yeah, it, it's part of my daily uh, struggles and fights, but uh, I, but I did learn some things with a year because at the, at the beginning I, I would be, I don't know, I mean, uh, way more like grumpy about the thing like about not being able to find my time or things like that right mm-hmm. uh, luckily for me there's like there's a point where I can choose a bit more what to work on right at the beginning it was like uh, a card for a wedding yes I'll do it a portrait <laughs> for my friend's mom yes please thank you you're paying me for drawing right like everybody mm-hmm. goes to that and that's amazing you you really have to but uh, at some point um to me the key to that is like i will i would say at the beginning that it's like finding your own time but i i also know that it's not completely true that it plays because working for clients or for a company it's gonna happen right the way everything is structured right now it's kind of gonna happen there's people that uh like dear she's like she's now she's working for a company but work because it's your baby right but it's not as pure as just drawing for yourself right um, yeah so anyway coming back uh, i i realized that it's super important to like the the actual job part like the part for clients uh the day that you can't find the time for you is not gonna hurt that much is that like, yeah i'm doing a cool thing anyway right mm-hmm. so to me it's a matter of um, kind of a check a daily check of how i done something uh, cool that i i have fun with and yes okay is it mine or for others well it's very if it's for me but if it's for others but i have fun anyway I'm, mm. I'm i go to bed happy right yeah so it's kind of a uh, I don't know, hard to hard to explain, but I did have a uh, more problem more problems than, than today with that. Uh, when when you feel trapped in a let's say in a company or something, uh, it's it's not it's not really good. Uh, it's it's a, I don't know, it's a bad feeling. Um, but yeah, I mean, one thing that I know for sure is that it takes some like courage to put yourself in the place that you want because. Um, I've met a lot of people that doesn't want to be where, like, in, in where they are, but they can't find the courage to also change it, right? Yeah. And they would just like be there for a lot of years. And uh, I don't know. For example, when when I did that book that you have on the back, the draft, draft yep. close. <laughs> um, I was I was doing a movie, the second movie in the same company here in Spain. And I would just like start in that company uh, as just visual developer. Then like I was a team lead and then I was like the supervisor, right? And I would feel like I would, I don't know, it was just going well, right? Uh, yeah. But I started to feel that that urge, that thing about, oh, I don't have time, I wanna do my projects. I'm I'm saying no to a lot of things to, to myself, right? Um, and I like, I don't know, I sit down and like thought about leaving and quitting the job. And it sometimes it's like, it sounds like something crazy, right? Whenever you get yeah. a job, but sometimes it's like, it's actually nothing very bad can happen. I'm not like, I'm not like, um, like telling to the people now, hey guys, quit your job. No, <laughs> everyone quit. Especially <laughs> not now. But um, I, I just mean that sometimes it's like, yeah, uh, if I leave, am I able to find something like this again? Like, am I good artist? I mean, people more or less uh, want your work, 
Mm -hmm. Am I um, going to be happy working in my pyjamas at 3 p.m.? Yes, 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 yep. yes, yes. And why not? I'm, I'm going to try it. And then, like, angry with me, like, why do you leave the company? And it's like, oh, is this what you want? Go for it. And it's like, can I cry now, please? It was like, I don't know. It's every time I've spoken with someone that, like, and I, I told what I truly feel, they would just, receive it super well right it's like yeah okay go for it so it takes a bit of like courage but uh, i wouldn't ever re regret doing that right it's like you can always go back i mean unless you have the work of your life right but you can always like uh, okay it didn't go very well i just tried this kickstarter i spent uh one year by my own i, I think i like more the companies okay and then yeah. um I don't know, then when you're a bit tired of the company, the next time you will think, yeah, I also remember I didn't like much uh, to be alone at home, for example. Okay, I'm going to try to just, instead of suddenly quit, I uh, would just like speak with people and change my role in the company, for example, right? So you get used to just like uh, put yourself in the place you, you feel by instinct that you're comfortable, right? Yeah. No, that's a great point. But the beginning is hard. It's really hard at the beginning because you you have to pick like everything that comes, right? Because you, mm -hmm. uh, the first years of freelance is more like the first years of begging for work, right? Yeah. Yep. It's, it's like it's lowballing hard. yourself and doing work yeah. that maybe isn't in your comfort zone or that you should be doing. <laughs> yeah. But you're right. I, I left a full-time job, it was like four years ago, roughly, and it was a very secure position. I had good benefits, and um, I actually love the people I work with, but you, you're you right. It comes to a point, though, where you're like, you know, though, it's it doesn't feel right anymore for me, and even though, like, it's there's nothing bad, there's no bad blood, I think you do have to, like, make those decisions for yourself, and not every artist will go through that, but you're right. It was It wasn't as bad as I thought it was. And I still have a good relationship with my old coworkers. And more often than not, like they want to see you succeed too, abandoning them. But I think if you, you got to let that go. But it's super cool because uh, you can ask them and most of them will tell you, man, I, I really envy what you did because you tried something that you feel at that moment that it's what you have to do. Um, and I don't know. I think, yeah, you're going to keep that good relationship uh, mm -hmm. in part is because of you follow what you, what you felt. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And kind of like, what I feel like the theme of this interview is, you know, you got to follow the direction that um, feels right and, you know, not to be swayed by um, expectations or uh, I guess in this case, job security, like you really do have to follow your heart and what direction it's telling you to go in. Yeah, totally. Um, the follow your heart is like, like a joke uh, mm -hmm. sentence, like you because you've uh, got no. Ah, there we go. Oh my god! Like <laughs> I said, I'm new to these. I don't know how to work them all. The yeah, time. yeah. No, no, it's okay. So that, that sentence, like follow your heart, like today you've you've uh, read or seen that everywhere, right? It doesn't mean anything anymore because it's like everywhere. But I I really like that because. Uh, it's not oh, yeah. actually follow your heart like just go it's like you have a, you have been building and working on your instincts right for a long mm -hmm. time and tr you have to trust them sometimes you're not gonna sit down and analyze the whole thing it's just like something doesn't feel and another choice feels right and it's <gasps> Oh, I'm so sorry, Danny. For some reason, it cut off my Hangout. There we go. OK. OK, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. All right, good. We're good. Can you? Oh, cool. Apparently, okay, I, good. apparently, if you touch these, it does something. Like, it'll activate things. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know exactly. I mean, if you pinch, it would change the mode. But also, uh, I do know. Oh, yeah, I know what happened. At least for me, when I remove one, it pause the music automatically oh. so maybe if you remove both it would just like cut the call i don't know anyway 
Yeah, must have. That we was are weird. here and now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, but continue, yes. Sorry, again? Oh, I, I feel like I cut you. I must have cut you at some point in your answer What with oh, what you were talking in the, about. In the, in the climax, actually. No, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But no, I was just saying that, uh, that um, yeah, you see and, and like, I don't know, like, follow your heart is always a good rule just because you have been developing your instinct for so many years and some mm -hmm. things are just complex but it just something feels good or something something feels bad and it's not that things are simple it's just that you're analyzing in your back a lot of things right like it's the same as meeting a new uh, person and sometimes it feels better than others and you don't analyze everything but you have a lot of experience and things that are happening in your brain right and it's like yeah i feel like i would uh, i like that person okay but yeah. you can't even say why it's just like yeah follow your instinct right so that works to everything i guess well i definitely feel like in the art realm as an artist the more that you do that and you follow that intuition i feel like it has at least for me in my experience that it's led to um, different little successes along the way and mm -hmm. I think you see that most when you're you know you're put up with a difficult decision and there's like I guess in this case job security and the, the scary one would be to leave it and pursue something else um, but those are the moments where I I feel the most I don't know courage that I've felt and I've gotten the most yeah. reward out of them so it's like another reminder to younger, especially younger artists that will be listening to this on YouTube. I, I think those are the moments that will define you on your path. And it's okay to be afraid, you know, because there will be times where it, you'll be, you know, given a difficult decision and you got to weigh your options. But uh, at least in my experience, that's what I've seen. And I, I'm, I'm sure that's something similar to you too. Yeah, totally. Uh, totally agree. And and it's not only that you have to be scared sometimes it's also that um the moments before a big change are like those that you're talking mm -hmm. about like super like scary and you have this here right and and after that you you kind of do the change you get used to the new reality and go back to a new routine let's say and that feeling of something big about to happen it's also something that I personally it like hooks me right i want another one of those because i really feel good when yeah. i think i'm putting pieces together and like okay let's do a, i mean i'm not gonna be like all the time doing big moves because you also have to save uh, like find those moments of like like routine and production and testing things that you, you you need time for those right but it's super cool from time to time to just like shake everything a bit mm -hmm. and feel that and it's like oh my god this is so like exciting right uh i think it's a uh, it's something uh i don't know i i would always do <laughs> maybe maybe becomes harder to do with the years i don't know but i really like that uh, yeah i definitely feel that way about you and uh the, at least the paths that i've seen you gone in the last five years that i've, I've virtually known <laughs> you <laughs> Uh, so the next question is, how do you overcome any art blocks that come your way? Mm. The art block. Uh-huh. Okay. Dreaded one. I know this is a question that every yes. artist gets. No, and no, I know no. that it's not always the most fun one, but uh, people oh, love no, no, no. hearing it, even if it like gives them a nugget of truth that may help you them. You know, because I and maybe quickly written, but never I've never got that question like like here now I've spoken, so it's it's oh. cool. um <laughs> I am. Um, well, it's it's hard because I mean, the short question is doing something else, right? Um, because to me, it's a matter of like, uh, of course, what's the problem, right? Like, it's an art block, but um, to me, an art block is basically driven by frustration because I tried some things that didn't go well or. I don't know what I want, right? And but I want something now. That that's a super modern problem, right? I don't know what I want, but I I need to post because it's Sunday, right? Yeah. Um. So that's that's something that completely triggers the art block. 
because to me it's um i don't know imagine imagine that you really want a book one book that you've seen in amazon it's like oh i want this book so bad you try to buy it and it's out of stock and mm -hmm. you you get like super frustrated and for this day and tomorrow you're like oh my god i can't have my book it's the it's the, the thing that i need right and you get like obsessed with that yeah and you're you're being frustrated with the fact that you can't have something that you've never had and that you actually have never opened maybe it's not what you expect but you're putting this big problem in the front right it's like but i need it and suddenly what happens is that you stop for a moment and you say okay i need that book i want that book but what what if it's not my first priority and then you just swap that that item on the list and it's like okay once it's in a stock i would buy it but i'm not gonna be worried now about that because i can't i can't buy it even even if i want so coming back to the topic yeah like to me the art block is a matter of it's putting in first priority something that for a moment it shouldn't be in first priority just like leave it to rest and don't worry about the art block because as most of the things it would start healing or fixing being fixed while it's not your first priority because if it's your first priority all the time uh you're gonna be uh i don't know super frustrated because you want that and you want it now right and i don't think that's how it works and said that there's a lot of ways to like put down that priority right it's like doing something that makes you completely disconnect like that's why that's why it's so effective to just go out and spend one day in the mm -hmm. in the woods or like in the mountain right because you go and you're like a, at least me i'm a bit like grumpy at the beginning like yeah i should be trying more and, and like i should be fixing this because i'm blocked and then you suddenly look forward and it's like oh this place is it's super cool and you just completely disconnect right but mm -hmm. uh the hard part to me is that one when you have an art block you want to fix the art block you don't want to go to the mountain right and that's the hard part to me is like allowing yourself to to say okay you know i have that uh i'm gonna take inspiration from other places and try to forget about this and uh i don't know that to me that works and like putting it in a more like practical words or something like that. Yeah, I would just like try to not not to draw for a while yeah. um, and do do other things that you like. Like you might like to just like go to the movies or maybe you play guitar, you just like go for that or hang out. Like speaking with people is like the best remedy to the very, very best remedy. Really? But not speaking about, not speaking about the art block, not speaking like, hey, team i have a problem you know what can i do uh, it's more like hey how's your day like you're gonna like what happens when you have some inspiration for a drawing what is what happens is that you see something like a small trigger is like oh that's that's actually really cool i would pay to go now home and try this thing right it's a small mm -hmm. facts a small uh livings that trigger the the inspiration right and it's like you see a scene in the movie you see a guy telling you like a friend of you telling you like i don't know uh i'm playing this video game and it's about uh whatever right uh, yeah and it triggers some ideas in you right so i mean speaking with people i mean just like about anything it's it's um it's hard that that you go out for the whole day you speak with people and you leave things and i don't believe that you don't have any ideas after that and if, if it could happen of course but i mean that i, I mean it, it won't happen if you're just like obsessed just going out looking for ideas but if you actually forget about that i mean you if you have if you have an art block it's because you like to draw you're gonna come back to draw because you like it i mean that i never met a person that dropped art because an art block is more like yeah i was like for a month um i wouldn't pick a pencil yeah i mean sometimes it's it's long or sometimes you just like uh, you don't like to draw for that 
you know, period of time or something, allow you to, right? Uh, it's fine. Uh, I'm super, uh, I mean, uh, obsessed with that, with drawing and like trying to fix it here and now. But yeah, uh, sometimes it works, right? But it has to be when you're in an art block and you want to fix it right now, sometimes I keep doing, keep pushing, keep pushing. And sometimes a good idea comes up. But yeah, I still feel it's been, it's because I've been a bit lucky, right? More than because I wanted to draw something cool. Sometimes it's just yeah. like fe feeding the monster, you know, like you have to leave it rest for a bit too. Oh, that's a great answer. Well, and I mean, a lot of what you're saying is right. You just, you can't focus on it too much. And I, I don't really come across art block that often myself. It's something that I feel bad that if artists are constantly struggling with, but if I, when I do get frustrated, you're right, I'll just, I'll drop it and I'll like go do something else. And you, what you, exactly what you said, if I talk to, especially my art buddies that are big, big video gamers, uh, they'll like talk about this, you know, part in this level that they thought was so cool. I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat. And then it'll be like a train or like eventually that'll accumulate then into, oh, you know what? I'll try this. And then you'll get back to drawing. And yeah, it's like you got over that hump. It's uh, totally because it's also a big difference of uh, you're like trying to find an idea. It's a big deal. Yep. In Pinterest, you're trying to find and it's a really good place for inspiration, but you get mainly drawings like you, you get the, the drawings like you wanna i don't know you but when i like a drawing i like that that drawing was mine <laughs> but it's already done by another artist right and yep. it's like oh, that's so cool and then what can that trigger that can trigger a lot of things but it's already a drawing in your mind but when when a friend is telling you a story your brain has to work because there's no images there and it's like, what if this or that? So it's mm -hmm. kind of a, it's kind of leaving room to your brain to just do the, his thing, right? Uh, instead of like giving him uh, already finished pieces and saying, I want to or not. Well, sorry, but like filling holes where like you get the input of only words and you fill it with images. Uh -huh. But if you put already images, you leave just this room for your imagination to work and that's not very inspiring at the end right oh, that's, that's why great it works so good uh, yeah it works to to speak with friends i don't know you know what i mean yeah no that's it that's a great way to describe it because i always wondered why i feel more inspired and yeah, and you're right because with pinterest it's already kind of giving you the final like this is how it is this is how the final result is and your brain he has to like then extract from that rather than if a friend tells you something, your brain pulls from nothing. And that's like a zero starting ground. Yeah. yeah it's, I like the, I like that. I, I'm really picky with uh, references just because of that. Not that I don't like to use them, but I like that they come in the right moment. Not before that. If I see drawings in an early stage, I literally can't get rid of them. And to me, when my brain is trying to go specific with my idea, then I would just go and find references and they are super useful. But to find ideas, uh, it's it's to me harder. I would usually say, no, don't show it. Don't show me everything. I'll just start drawing the first thing that comes to my mind yeah. instead of putting together. But once I have an idea, it's like, yeah, I want to be precise. I don't know how a I don't know, cloak falls, right? So, okay. so. I'll find some images or like uh, for the face of the character or whatever, right? But the very beginning to me is more like triggering something in the brain, right? Yeah. Oh, that's great. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to pick up that practice a little more before I draw. Like rather than like look at interest for inspiration to start as drawing, like think about inspiration first and then, okay, if I'm going to do ghost train, okay, then I can start looking up visual references of ghost trains and um, see if they kind of match what I saw in my head or just like real trains and, you know, pull inspiration from that. It's, it's funny how, how much of like, if you're find, trying to find a train, for example, yeah. how much you already have in your mind and you can draw like 30 seconds and have all the features that you like already. And then like, okay, how does this, I don't know, change, I don't know, whatever, like front of the train works. But then like the first drawing you 
you put there like one minute drawing is the one that you're gonna like a lot because it's like it came just from you right and it's, it's gonna be probably the most original one but then after that yeah, yeah we reference we fix we i don't know shape the whole thing and yeah i don't know at least it's it is what works for me um but yeah i mean there's uh, as many approaches as people right yeah <laughs> no <laughs> so I, I think I that's great though doing. i think that's wonderful uh, so then getting to the next question it was how do you feel art has defined who you've become today um i don't know i'm not sure exactly if i understand the the question but like guess... uh how has art kind of made you who you are that like if you weren't an artist you might not be who you are today so how do you feel like art has pulled okay. you into the person you are today so to me it's um it's a uh, something uh, love hate relationship it's more way more love than hate in my case but i do know yeah. i also know that it comes with a price let's say it's not love hate it's just like a love relationship but it also comes with a price and to me the price has has made me how, how I am uh, in, in some ways. Uh, one is that I'm like a bit obsessed with uh, producing, pr producing things, right? Like just like creating something. It could be music or it could be uh, um, uh, sculpting something. I don't know, anything art related um, but that I do my way, right? It's not like yeah. assembling an Ikea thing is producing, but in a different way. Um, so it, it has made me uh, really, um, probably because of decisions I, I've taken, I don't even remember, it, it has made me uh, really active. Like I would just like, I would like less the plans of just chilling and not doing anything, right? Yeah. And I would just like all the time be a bit uncomfortable with uh, just, I don't know, being there and, and, it, it that's because of uh because somewhere about creating and i would just empower that feeling through the years and at the end it's really cool but at the same time it's like a you should be satisfied also with things that doesn't require productivity right yeah so in that sense uh that has made like a big like um i don't know shape in me let's say a big, big mark in me i don't know if that's like kind of what you meant with the question but that's one of the things that first come to my mind um when i think about like how do i i don't know how do you well, relate with that i kind of like what you said earlier you know as a kid you were so attracted to these animes and these games and i feel like for you your life has kind of gone down this path naturally of um, art always being in your life and always being kind of surrounded in it even if it's subconsciously when you were little uh so in a way art just always been there for with you so i don't you're not like one of the artists that i talk to where they kind of come into the art world in their late teens or early 20s and then they like they die full in it how it like changes their way of thinking and their route uh, you could possibly be one of those artists that it's just always been with you and you can't remember not having it a part of your life totally uh i mean i do remember just the step from Hey, I'm gonna study this and try to make something with this, like yeah. professionally. But before that, yeah, I, yeah, I just can't remember. But just because, uh, I don't know, I I felt really like fun the 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 just the plan to go like like in the in the ground and like draw with a paper as a kid. And I yeah, I don't remember not having that. I wasn't all day drawing. Let's say even if it's just like Legos. Right. Yeah. But, but it's it seems like something silly, but it's actually really uh, important. And I I don't know where that comes from, but I I do remember like um, having Legos. With, let's create little mm -hmm. spaceships or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. And at the end, is yeah, it's kind of a. I didn't actually decide much about um, the, like dedicating my life to art. It was just like something more natural, as you said, but. Um, yeah, I don't know why. Actually, I, my parents are not artists. Uh, it was not an yeah. art, like artistic Same. environment, not much. 
um, all my brothers like do some arts, but not really. Um, I mean, basically music. Uh, so I don't know. It just it's been always there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny. Neither of my parents are artistic, and like like my brother's a construction worker. So I I have a family that's very non artistic, and. Um, relating with them is always kind of funny because my dad specifically doesn't really understand any of the art world and he always like tim like why do you draw all these fantasy things like wouldn't you wouldn't it you be better received if you did like portraits of like people and yeah. i'm like no dad I, I think people are kind of into the whole uh fantasy thing <laughs> yeah. um so it's funny how I think a lot of my, like, um, the people that gave me reassurance, especially as a kid, was definitely not my parents or my family per se, but it was a lot of like video game or other other nerdy kids that I kind of hung around because we had that same interest. And what, what I thought was cool is like Lulu's dress from Final Fantasy X, but it's ridiculous. Um, and it it's a lot of like the non-practical, almost sensational uh, looks that art can create that I'm so attracted to. And I think that's something that has a dog, like <laughs> very rigid way of looking at things. So maybe in a way that yeah. actually inspired me to go the opposite direction. <laughs> yeah, but I guess I guess it's something uh, common in uh, in people that was like uh, really fan of video games because we are. I mean, I'm I'm older than you, but we're still kind of in a similar generation. And yeah. I say this because. It's a generation where parents didn't understand much video games. So mm -hmm. for us, closing the door and playing, to me, Final Fantasy IX, for example, was my favorite. Uh, playing that, it was an alone activity, right? It was just for me. So uh, it's like escape, but not like escape, uh, like people that want to like get away from reality. No, nothing wrong was... Yeah out there with the reality it's just that i felt that as mine it's like oh, i discovered that world it's i know it's all other people working on final fantasies but i at that moment when i was teenager i thought i was there uh, i don't know somehow yeah. I, uh, it was made for me right and uh, because also i discovered it by my own and none of my parents will uh, understand that they will just look at that and say like oh it's like a bit too many sparkly things here. Watch out your eyes, right? They don't say anything else. <laughs> so it's more like, oh, this is amazing and I can't uh, share, share it with them. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, oh, this is such a funny example. Um, so like what you're saying exactly, like I, I watch Digimon by myself every Saturday. And I remember when the first season ended, I mean, spoilers, they get separated from their Digimon partners and like they go back to the real world with the, um, premise that they'll never see them again so me as like a nine-year-old or whenever I was watching this I was just bawling my eyes out and then I, I come upstairs to my mom I'm like mom will they ever see their Digimon again <laughs> my mom my mom is like has no idea what I'm even talking about but her kid is like crying like holding up a picture that I printed on the internet of like um, it, this is, you know, the yeah. end of the season. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but you're right. It's so personalized that for you, it, at least for me, especially playing video games, I felt like I was there. I felt like these were my friends. I felt like I was a part of the experience so much. Yeah. And it, it's hard, it's harder as you get older to experience that same level of like immersion. Um, but I think when you're a kid, like you're right, it, you are, that, that is your life for the time that you yeah. play it or the time that you're experiencing totally. it. Totally. Yeah, 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 totally. And I agree. Yeah. Uh, so the next question is, what is the best advice to an artist just starting out and then another artist struggling with where they're at? So they might be like a few years into it, but they're just not feeling great about their work. Mm, so, I mean, the first the first uh, intuition is to go with that. It's just because by, by putting some hours, there, there are some things that, are gonna happen for sure, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanna make sure that uh, people get to that point because um, because some some things actually change when when you draw a bit more. If you draw more at the beginning, uh, like it, at some point you're gonna get comfortable with what you draw. And that's a huge difference. I don't mean completely satisfied. I mean comfortable. 
like you would say, okay, I don't want to break the drawing. Okay, that's cool. Uh, there's a huge amount of frustration coming from the fact that you have a like a really good idea in your brain and you can't translate it to the paper as you see it in your brain, right? It's like, it's so good. Why yeah. am I doing this ugly thing, right? Uh, that's a point where people drops because it's just like, it's normal. I mean, you want to put it on paper and show it to your friend and you can't. And it's a super a big amount of frustration, right? So um, put some hours on the drawing, right? Uh, it's it's kind of, a, it, it's gonna happen at the end. And it's not, it doesn't take much that you start liking what you what you draw. And some are the, like, you know that feeling at the beginning, it's oh, yeah. a single drawing that you don't know, how oh, was I like touched? by the gods like how do i do that i can't <laughs> repeat it ever and then like suddenly you you keep going and it doesn't look like your like a sparkly drawing that you don't even know if it was you or someone else right and then like i, I want i used to to like to see it this way you're you're raising the level of your worst drawing so nothing is like completely wrong it's more like yeah when i don't have a good day my drawing is okay that's a co really yeah. cool thing right so at the beginning uh just draw in the i mean it's hard to do but because we are we are always uh thinking about who we want to be but mm -hmm. uh at the beginning the best thing that you could do but it's hard is to draw no pretensions just like feel uh, papers with things and I I know this is like this thing I'm gonna say it's a bit uh, maybe a bit weird at this point but you I mean it worked for me but it, like you have to know how to take it and it's like copy everything it's not bad copying is not bad like the, the bad thing is that saying that is yours right but you can copy things yes. because you're gonna <laughs> learn a lot I've learned so much by not, not even copying tracing drawings when i was little like really little right you get bored pretty easy to just trace the, the drawing on the top right but um copying means learning like when you go to school they like 99 percent of the activities are a different way of copying like copy from real life uh, I don't know, like take one artist that inspire you and do a drawing in his style. So that's kind of copying. So don't be afraid of like, just like copying because you will get a lot of uh, library in your mind, like a lot of resources that you would make yours, but not because you hide that they come from here. No, it's just because you, you can't avoid make them yours. It's going to happen because you're going to, oh, I like this, but I'm actually going to change it a bit or whatever. I don't know. Um, so I would just like prioritize to draw a lot, even if you're copying drawings that you like. Um, that's a super good exercise. It, that's for like very, very beginning, right? Yeah. And what, like the second part was like for someone that what, sorry? They might be like five years in, into doing art, but feel like they're not getting very far with it or they're not satisfied with the work they're producing. Yeah, to me, it's kind of a, it's kind of uh, if you you are in a you're drawing right, but inside drawing there's different places to be right. Mm -hmm. One is the hard to me the hard exercise that I practiced a lot, which is I'm imagining something. I just go isolate myself and I start to draw right. No reference, no whatever. But usually that's a bit hard. But turns out that for me it's a good thing. But when I can't do that because some days it's like or some months it's like. Uh, I don't know. I don't feel like uh, I feel like I'm stuck, and not. Yeah. I don't mean art block. I don't know what to draw. It's like I feel like I'm not learning anymore. And to me, that's a key. Like learning is the key to, to me. So jump to learning. And go and, and it. After putting yourself into like so much pressure of you like doing things better and better, or like just mm -hmm. like trying to put in paper your own ideas. I, it really feels so good to go back to classroom mindset. Like I sit down and 
you tell me now what to do, what to practice. And it's like, you, it's a complete different mindset, right? Yeah. It, it, it releases you from all your self pressure. It's more like, you know, I'm going to do what that guy is telling me to do. That feels so good. We, we miss that a lot when we are putting pressure on, on yourself, on, on ourselves, right? Because oh, you can't absolutely. be your own. Yeah. And you can't be your own director of your own career all the time because it's being like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's hard, just as simple as that. So when I, when I'm not very satisfied when I, with uh, what I do, I just swap to learning. Uh, and if, if it's, if you know specifically what happens, you can learn that matter, but maybe just like something art or something drawing related. Um, if, if I don't know, if you don't know what to do, just go to the basics and like uh, learn anatomy uh, or just something related to anatomy. But um, but I want to like clarify that I don't mean practicing by your own. I mean specifically listening to someone that is not you and saying, you know, I'm going to trust this person uh, because I'm not in charge right now. That's mm -hmm. really important too. It's not only... Uh, I don't know what to do. Okay, 100 hands challenge, right? Or that's a self challenge, Fulfilling. right? That yeah. you put to yourself. And I, I, I really feel that the pressure goes away when you have to follow actually a, a pacing of some other people telling you, yeah, now we are gonna do something. And you remember those moments in your, in your classroom that you think, ah, I already know how to do this. This is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. But you do it anyway, and and it's cool because it it uh, brings again the spark of oh I, I I know how to do that I know how to do that I want to do it and, and and like go to the next right and that's super super important so I would always jump in between creating for you and like trying to find a style and things like that yeah and, um, learning from others like that have some sort of structure on their on their uh, like passing the knowledge, right? Um, and that's a super good uh, moment for that now. Like it's so, so, so easy to just buy a super cheap course of someone and just like follow it. And best thing is that it's just a two week thing. It's like perfect. You don't need to just like sacrifice one year if you don't want. Yeah, it's, and even when you were talking about the capping, were you ever one of those kids that would hold up uh, a drawing on like a big window and then trace it that way? No, not really. I'm oh. comfortable. I, don't, I, I mean, I, I, I've done that in at school or something like that, but I would just like, uh, like literally lose sight by going this close to see through yeah. the paper and the table. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would just like uh, remember, like I was one of those kids that had uh, this posture when drawing. Like it was completely <laughs> close to it. Not anymore, but yeah, I was. I would trace like that. <laughs> also because uh because i would trace mostly from magazines and it's one single page tied to a whole magazine and it's so uncomfortable when you're tiny to just put it in the window and like because it's uh, this thick right oh yeah i mean that it's always funny hearing the origins of artists because yeah <laughs> I, I mean my mom would like walk in on me and i'd, I'd be like drawing on the window but it was just tracing <laughs> she's like what are you doing like I'm drawing, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, it is drawing, but <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so the next question is um, our last one out of the ten, and then we'll get to the user question. So I guess the mm -hmm. to the watchers right now, if you can put at von Art before your comment or your question, that way we'll get into those after this question about being authentic in your work. Um. Well, it all it all comes a bit to the the finding your own, own style right mm -hmm. um it's people are really obsessed with that and especially at the beginning right um and i see it this way uh and it, we're also super used to see that in movies it, it again it sounds a bit like a joke but you're like literally bored and tired to see the this same um 
story in the movies, which is a guy struggling with something and going, getting, like getting crazy, looking outside the world, looking what happens and like, why can't I find the magic, let's call it. And then what mm -hmm. happens is that 80% of the movie goes away. And in the last 20%, the guy realizes what surprise, surprise, you had to look inside, not outside. Yeah. It's always yeah. like that, right? Not always. Of course, it's not always like that. It's really common in commercial movies. Yeah. Uh, but that's, it's really good example because I don't mean like, yeah, isolate yourself from everything. No, but you have to look and try to find what you like because there's, there's, there's nothing else like like that to be original because you have a unique childhood probably maybe childhood maybe like teenage i don't know i don't know but i yeah. mean that it, even if it's now and you don't have to look back but you have to ask yourself what you like uh because you probably you probably like a unique mix of things no one else has the same mix the same the same perception mm -hmm. of things as you have right uh, so that's for, let's say, having ideas and starting to draw. I think that it's really important to just like, what's, what's your trigger, your trigger for drawing? Like to me, is that thing I would tell you, right? Like, uh, okay, let's uh, imagine that uh, there's a bunch, like, I don't know, a group of 10 characters going to fight to a tournament. What's, what's my tournament? and not your tournament, like what is that kind of thing that attracts me? Yeah, okay, to me, let's say, um, uh, to me, it, it, I always like when it feels kind of a sports, right? Yeah. Probably because of, I don't know, some, some anime that I would, I don't even remember which <laughs> one, but I love when they have like uh, equipment and numbers, right? It's like, they, I don't know, I like that. And you have to find that, right? And then you would mix everything and come up with an original, kind of setup and and I don't know I think people has to think a bit about what they like but to me it's important to do it while you draw you don't discover these things like thinking like 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 this and <laughs> you just like think a lot until you have it no it's more like go and like find it while drawing and that's honestly the only thing I would care about because uh, I mean regarding the, the style because the technically the style your own style yeah uh, I'm completely convinced that in the moment you're thinking about your style it's already set it's just I mean you, you're not gonna escape that like how many times have you tried to do a, something different you show it to someone and it's like yeah that's completely your drawing and it's like why because 90% of the choices that you do, like just mm -hmm. a single stroke, right? You do a single stroke, you can't control to do the, the, the one stroke as that artist. No, there's, there are so many things happening where, when you draw in, your, in the back of your brain that you can't control that. I would say like literally that you can't escape your style. It's, yep. you can't even if you want, right? So. Don't worry about that. Just put some more hours, do what you like, draw what you like, because the style, how is, I mean, how is possible that you, you are, like how many artists do you know and how many of them you see a single piece and you know the artist? It's, oh, yeah. It's as complex as the, as recognizing someone by the face, right? Like. All the faces have the same features, two eyes, like one nose, like everything, right? And you still see clearly who's who. So mm -hmm. the, the style is really similar. You, 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 you're you not gonna be able to not do it. But I think the people that ask, how can I find my, find my style? It's actually asking something else, right? It's a mix in between how can I be comfortable with what I draw without like how can I get close to that artist but I don't want to copy right because that's a concern um and the thing is that I think uh you have to just keep going and suddenly you're never thinking about that and when you think about that it's under another perspective which is yeah I mean I I'm, today I can say I'm comfortable with what I draw but comfortable doesn't mean I love 
or I'm satisfied completely. I'm just mm-hmm. try to get rid of a lot of things from my style that I don't like, or I consider that they come from weaknesses, right? Uh, yeah. But that's something that I can keep for me and keep working on that while, I don't know, being happy, let's say, right? While sharing and, and, and creating cool things. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's hard. I, I, I don't think you can, like, to summarize, I don't think you can escape your style. If you draw enough hours to just going, all the people is going to say, yeah, that's your drawing. And maybe you don't mm-hmm. like your own style that much, but you can work on that in the future. I remember my old professor used to even tell me not even just the way you draw, but who you are gets so ble- it like bleeds so much into your work. And he was saying, um, if you are naturally a sad person or an arrogant person or uh, any, any of that type of personality traits, it'll bleed into your work because then your work will kind of have the sense of being sad or arrogant or whatever. And it was this whole idea of you can't escape yourself. So I totally agree with everything you just said about like how to stay authentic. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm going to open this up now to the users mm-hmm. that are watching, but I do want to ask my personal question. And okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, I, I'm sure I come up with so many. Um, what have you found that has inspired you or has changed the way you look at your work and how you do it? Mm, well, um, short answer, 3D. Um, it has opened a lot to me. Like, you know, when, when you learn anything, um, the more you learn, the, the, the slower you, you, I don't know how to say it, but uh, at the beginning you really feel the progress in two days drawing is like, oh, I'm, I'm the best, like yeah. compared to two days ago, right? Then like once you've reached a level, uh, let's say even if you keep, if you keep learning, it doesn't show that much and it's more like polishing and like it gets like a slower at the end, right? Um, so what I mean with this is that I don't feel like I'm like, I know everything, not at all, of course, but when I started 3D, I just opened a new place to just like feel that the speed of, okay, I can apply this here. And I don't know, it's like opening a new door that is very similar to my drawings and where I can actually jump from one to another. And that was like um, my discovery this week, this already this year. Uh, kind of two years ago, but this year I, I've been doing it a lot. Um, and but uh, about drawing, I discovered. I think this has been the year of the restrictions in drawing to me. Mm. I discovered how cool restrictions can be. Um, meaning, I've been testing more than ever. What if I just paint with a flat brush all these little challenges right both black and white right why if i don't uh, pick color but that's that doesn't apply that much but especially yeah. the brushes i've been like saying what if i have to do a drawing that is all like a noisy really noisy drawing and like if i can actually show you a bit of what i mean but oh yeah, yeah. um just like coming back to here so it's been like a, a super cool for uh, restriction for me in a way that, for example, these these guys here, these guys are hmm. made only with a, uh, uh, it's hard to zoom here, but uh, anyway, these guys are made only with a uh, flat brush, uh, but oh, everything, yeah. in the, everything in the drawing is a flat brush, 50% opacity. So it's never covering completely, right? Um, I may be, may be able to show it to you, but, oh well, no, I can't actually, nothing. Anyway, uh, so to me, sorry, sorry, NBA. to me like uh, finding, yeah, it's just because I, I mean, when you don't have some things prepared, you know, you're gonna oh, go yeah. through some folders that is like, oh no, I can't. Okay. But here, like you can see that it's, it's been. It's really flat, mm. right? And the, the thing here was like basically 
painting with a brush that it's flat but not completely covering like it's not 100 percent opaque uh, and uh, i discovered that it like that plus restricting a bit the palette it, it's like really cool for this kind of uh finish right it, it makes me do that kind of drawing right or yeah in this case uh like the same but with um with a, a uh, brush that it's like just like oily and really like blending right so i would just like um these actually these drawings were made by you see those uh, like popping up uh intense colors right that was the first layer on the background it was like a mess of orange and pink uh. and then uh, this kind of gray is is like cutting the silhouette on the top it's not actually the yeah. background it's the, the, the top right um, anyway, I'm not trying to like teach to do anything. I just mean that I would put just like a, as, a, as a fun exercise, really uh, hard restrictions and, and it would just like, um, open a lot of uh, doors for like, like these moments where, where I'm, uh, blocked or I don't know what to do. It's, it's been a cool resource to me to, okay. Uh, I can do that uh, when I don't know what to do. It's a cool exercise to get out of a comfort zone. So it's been really cool. Yeah, I like that. I mean, I, that makes so much sense testing out these different restrictions and why, like, yeah. especially those two examples you just showed, they were so different from one another. Uh, but that totally makes sense. Oh, man, that's I, so cool. I, I feel like I, I learn a lot with doing that, and it allows me to... Uh, like you know and especially all the people that paints in digital mm -hmm. they know how how i don't know how digital is the digital art right how tight mm -hmm. you are to the layers and to the ways of painting and when specific brushes exercises yeah the brushes and then the way that the software is working those exercises are, has made me uh uh, introduce in my work in my job actually uh ways to paint again and not like not only like go super structured and by layers and like you know it's super rigid i would say the the work that you do for um and and i would just with that I would, uh, i've been like coming back to paint for clients even if it's just for a animation series or movies i would just like introduce more elements of hey i like to paint uh yeah it you know like when you just paint and you get a feedback you have to change things it's, it's harder right because you don't have all the layers and all the things but you yeah. know what it's like i'll do it again but i'm having fun before, before gradient whatever and now it's more like if you don't like it i'll make another one uh but I'm gonna enjoy the process because if not, I'm gonna just die quit, right? Yeah. Gosh, that's so bold. That's so great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this next question is from Marco Santos, and he says, "What would your dream project be?" Mm. Oh my god. Actually, yeah, I'm kind of curious I... to hear this too. <laughs> I mean, I guess a bit even because um, I've been jump jumping between. Uh, actually like uh, if if uh, if i'm working for a company i can't choose i i have a really good pros and cons and cons in, in both sides and i like i would say i like them equally but my dream project would be for me not for a company at mm -hmm. least right now and for me actually i told you already that i'm uh, doing this like labyrinth uh test video game in a way that i'm having fun and everything so honestly uh, before that i tried i wanted to just like do a small project right instead of game going crazy and being frustrated and i started um a short film with labyrinth i wanted to do a short film oh really like really three minutes or things like that because i knew a bit like some tools of like things um and i would just like uh, let's say I would. I met a, a guy that did a really cool uh, short films uh, in Square Enix, and I just like you know what happens. I want to be like him, and he's like, ah, okay, I'm gonna do Labyrinth as a short film. This is gonna be amazing, and 
during the process, which I just spent some some months, uh, I would just I. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, hold on. Now people are saying that you got muted. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, you know what? Hold on. This happened. Oh, there we go. Okay, I think they can hear you now. Jeez. Man, Danny, I am not used to like touch feature headphones yet. <laughs> Cause like one of them like died, and then just me pulling it out, then turned both them off. I'm 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 learning. But anyways, no no, I wanted to hear because I loved what you were saying. Um, I d I didn't hear it. Did you say you wanted to be an animation or a game? Okay. a really small project that I could afford. Um, but uh, yeah, I also discovered that, I'm, I don't know, my uh, like affinity wise, I'm not very like close to directing small movies. I, it's, I've never done that, but most important, I've never wanted that, right? I, of course, I would love to see Labyrinth as a short film, but yeah, uh, I, if I have to be like, uh, if I have to be like uh, true to myself, it's like yeah, I want to do video games about my world more than anything else, I guess. So I guess the dream project would be something from my creation, and, and like really important is that it's a small team. I I, mm. I really I'm really liking more that all the decisions that you take as a small team, you you can be true to yourself like don't be scared about like you know like uh when it's a big company there's like compromises and there's like a lot of people uh putting their their, opi their opinion which is really cool but at the end um i i don't know i think that going small and doing a piece that it's like more author right and less yeah. company like more like yeah this is what i want to say right now it's something that it feels right to me right now to just like give you a little drop of uh something small that you enjoy the way i want right yeah i know that's great <laughs> uh i'm finding there it seems like a lot of uh people are on the chat that oh there we go i had to like scroll up um <laughs> to find more questions but it, I, I love diving into your brain, like hearing the way you talk about art and like your passions, because it just sounds so not only unfiltered, but like I can hear it in your voice. Like your passion just seems very evident to me. I mean, it is to me, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not a joke. But I don't know. Um, thanks. I I think it all comes because uh, the thing that I really, really like way that I don't, when, when you were saying about like taking care of your gallery and like kind of yeah. listening to the audience, I, I like to take care of that, but I know I'm not very good at it in a way that uh, I like working with, for example, with a team, but that's the biggest I can go. I, I'm not that guy that is going to entertain the audience and keep mm -hmm. them busy. I, I don't know. It doesn't come from me. Uh, and I'm, I don't mean that um, that you like to do that more than drawing, not at all. You you know. Oh no, I totally get it. No, no, yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess I don't know. Uh, I don't know where that comes from. I don't know. I just lost the track. <laughs> <laughs> that happens happens to me all the time. I'm surprised how I'm keeping the track on the answer. <laughs> you have to mix that I speak too much with a. Uh, English is not my language, and at the end, it's like, "Yoohoo, let's go!" <laughs> <laughs> no, this has been great. I I love this very much. Um, we'll take a couple more questions though, 
And then mm -hmm. I don't want to take up too much of your time today. So That's the fine. next one's from Cody, and they ask, "Are you planning on making an art book or something like that in the near future?" Um, I'm I'm fighting with uh, what to do next. I don't have. A, I mean, now I'm like pausing everything that it's like producing anything new because I don't have mm -hmm. time. But once I have time, uh, if I have to just speak out loud what I think. I'm more inclined right now to go towards uh, digital tutorials. Oh, really? Let's say, yeah, I'm more inclined by like teaching now. Not a lot, but I mean, if I have to do something extra, it would be probably more like, uh, yeah, something like tutorials or things like that. Uh, I think I would really love to do an art book, but what I want to do is to do it again by myself. I did mm -hmm. like those two yeah. books you have there, and it's it's. I would I would. I, I, want, I don't regret at all, right? But um, I would do an art book, for example, if if something cool comes up, like if it's a collaboration or like uh, you know, like for example, I've been uh, in the past doing things with three D total. So if it's something that is like fair enough in amount of uh time versus reward because yeah uh because i'm also really picky and if i do it i want it really like good and like so i know i would spend a lot of time so i would need help that's the only thing i i, I say so but now it's not in the plans and also i have a bit of that imposter syndrome where i never feel i'm good enough for an art book you know oh. <laughs> that's why i that's why I kept like if you see those books, the Intor is like a one month project. It's like it's just one month, and the other is more like, <laughs> hey, I'm gonna put in a book all my sketchbook. It's not an art book. It's just like yeah, take a sneak peek of my sketchbooks. But I always I think like okay, a big art book. Uh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, for, for those who are wondering, like Danny already has, at least the two that I own are the Draftsman's Close, and mm -hmm. this one I think is lovely. It's like what you kind of said, like a glimpse into your sketchbook, and this one I really love. And then this one I thought, this like blew a lot of my friends' minds back in the day, because it is, like Danny said, it's his Inktober book, so it's one month, but he did it accordion style, and the drawing starts and it just continues to unfold and it's this beautiful this idea I just found to be so beautiful because then the book accompanies that idea of like doing one really long drawing perfectly um, I look through this usually like right before every October I'll like take another gander at this <laughs> because the other oh thing I God. found so interesting about I mean it's kind of hard to see on the camera this is something just buy it just go to Danny's website just buy it and uh, you have such a, there's a fluidness to just let it be so free. I, I find myself being very tight with drawings and to be very, um, they like they, I overthink things, especially in the, the process of making it. But like your transitions from one to the next just feel so free form and so organic in a way that doesn't feel rigid or regimented by um, it has to be this way or oh the dimension doesn't make sense or the scale wouldn't make sense it's like you know what no I'm gonna have this giant fish and then there's gonna be an ocean and it flows into a wand or whatever it might be uh, and that's something that I've, I've always admired and I think that's why this one's is like one of those key points in the artistic history that I've become accompanied to that I think that's really so cool stands out to that. me <laughs> <laughs> So glad to hear that. Oh, yeah, so the person yeah, who's asking, uh, really beautiful. technically, you already have two books. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know, I know, but I mean that, yeah. Uh, you know, like traditional way of an art book is like, ooh, I don't know, like, yeah, but maybe someday, but not, feel, not in the plans, yeah. I feel like eventually if you get um, this Labyrinth project even further out, I mean, I would personally, I would I'd be first in line to buy the next book, but I, I would love to see... Um, you like for like realize it even more fully so that if you did make an art book um, it would just contain page after page of like idea and um, sketch and art and it would be like even more realized which I, I can't wait yeah. for whatever thing you pop out next but to you're totally right in a way that to me it feels more right or if it's like it makes sense if let's put for example the labyrinth mm -hmm. um, it's like a frame a frame framing that uh, topic and put it in a book 
it makes more sense to me that Danny Diev, the art, right? That's to me, I don't know. I don't, I don't see, I mean, it would be cool, but I don't see it like, it sounds to me like your uh, summary of your life, right? Yeah, like you're done. I don't know. And it, it's to me, I don't know, but I see that from a lot of people and it's amazing. It's amazing. But I feel more like, for example, as you said, like picking a, a theme where I, like, I have a lot of art from that labyrinth, for example. and It's like when it feels right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this next question is from Jonathan Liddell. And he says, with a small team as the ideal, do you have folk in mind you trust enough to bring on board for your dream project? And they have serious hair envy from you. <laughs> they they have, sorry, the last thing? <laughs> serious hair envy. So your hair is looking really good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> the hardest part, <laughs> the hardest part of um, of a small team is to bring someone else on board because you mm-hmm. can break everything in a way that, I mean, it's a matter of like percentage, right? Like we are three. So if there's one more, it would be one quarter of the team, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's when, to me, the the key to have a small team is to do everything by yourself. How? With the tools you already know. It's like, how can I work around things to make it work as I, as what, what, the things I do? Of course, you, you have, like, I, I like to keep that mindset as much as I can, but sometimes it's like, uh, you know, uh, I can, I'm not an animator. No one here is an animator. And the animations are really ugly right now. We need help. Yeah. Okay, you have to also be be able to <laughs> acknowledge that. But once you've isolated those things, you don't need to bring someone on board like to be the core of your team. You need to ask for help mm-hmm. maintaining the two or three or four that you are comfortable because they're probably your friends, right? And then yeah. asking for help in a more... Okay, I do, I do some music, but I mean, from what I do to a professional quality, it's like... Mm-hmm. It's a long way, right? So I would, ha- if I need music, I will have to ask for help, um, and I will need it. But I won't pick a musician and bring him on board because I'm not even a big company that I can maintain people. It's more like, yeah, you know, I, I, what I do is bunch of people, and we need this portion. But I like that. Uh, I don't know to keep it small and to keep it small usually it to me you don't need to uh, form the group because it's been formed because it's probably a friend or or two people that that just like are suddenly together by affinity like if we both want yeah. this okay let's go it goes in a more like natural way and i prefer honestly to take like the, any project that is like that to take longer doing it than transforming everything into a company. Eventually, if you're a small team and let's say in a video game and same for short film, you have to do a company. At some point, you have to like do some work that is like more company, but you keep it in the, uh, you know, the uh, friends basement mindset. You keep it as long as you can, right? Like have fun and like, spend hours and uh, don't put that many task lists. It's good to have task lists because you have objectives, but just like follow your heart a bit more than you would do in a company, right? So that's what I'm like kind of, uh, that what, what it would be my dream uh, project, but that's, that has a big problem Yeah, that it's not, it doesn't sound that, like your main income as the way as I'm saying it, right? So it would be probably more something on the side. And if you're lucky enough that the product is really amazing, maybe the next time you will have money in advance. But I I can completely like promise you that if you have an input of money or from someone, it's not going to be the same. It's going to be yeah. like someone that also has his opinion. And it's great because it allows you to work on your second project but yep. it's never i don't know it's a it's a hard balance but yeah i mean i guess i went a bit 
away from the no that's there. great <laughs> no and well i think you just expanded upon or expanded upon it and uh the other would you personally do you think would you like hand pick the other people you'd want to work with or would you like open it up online and like search for it that way or would you rather look in your own pool of people that you know of like okay i need an animator what friends do i know that can animate and like reach mm -hmm. them out first yeah first that's a that's my always my first option uh just be yeah i don't know it's first option because it's kind of part of the rule of uh use the tools you you know it's like yeah. use the people you know too right there is something that you mm -hmm. don't want to lose that is the friendship right uh, it never happened to me i mean i'm saying i'm it seems like i i don't know it never happened to me but i just mean that yeah um, even if it's friendship it's kind of work and you have to have a clear idea of what's going to happen in the future especially if there's some money involved uh, but yeah first choice would be picking uh friends because they are i mean i know them already and i don't know it feels natural but i won't i won't say yeah i need someone i don't know i won't use the online no perfectly fine to i don't know it's fine yeah no, that's a good point I, I think a lot of people want to work with their friends but it's kind of like what you said um just make sure that if you go into it uh that you know you remain friends first and then working companion second yeah like or that. uh yeah or i don't know i don't know if it's first or second but clear things like it's super <laughs> easy to to go in the mistake like yeah no worries we're friends I, that's why you define now what's going to happen because you're friends it instead of now nah, we don't need to speak about boring money things i mean you don't need to put everything on paper because you're friends but at least you have to say a clear hey you, this is kind of 50 50 right yeah okay okay that's enough mm -hmm. but yep. you have to say it out loud because it could be i don't know bad for the future right yeah, you don't want things like that unspoken. And like a small conversation yeah. can clear the air for a lot of problems down the line. Yeah, 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 totally, totally. Same um, in terms of commitment, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the same, so is, like, yeah. Uh, the next, sorry, I keep like interrupting you. I feel bad, like, ah, da. <laughs> no, but it's also because uh, I, I think I told you at the beginning, it's like a bit of delay, just tiny, and it's like mm -hmm. enough to just to go like, hey, no, no, yeah. no. Yep. Like, you just go to the next one, yeah. Uh, so the next question is from Mashinka, and they say, what are some of your biggest artistic influences? Um, okay. First, I think the biggest it probably is uh, Akira Toriyama from Dragon Ball. I mean, it's, it's hard that you don't know him, but if you don't, it's a creator of uh, Dragon Ball and a lot more of animes. Um, he was like a huge influence, but even before knowing that he was the, 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 the guy that was drawing, because you would just see his name in the series, but you would not know that he's also the creator of the story and the drawings of the manga, especially in Europe or in America, that we are not used to that manga that is one guy doing everything in the past, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, anyway, uh, Akira Toriyama probably then like a lot of Japanese influences that uh, like, I'm just trying to go back to those drawings I just stare at forever and like, like really catch inspiration more than technique wise or like style is more like those things that I would just really like to see. Uh, Yoshitaka Amano, it's a guy mm -hmm. that uh, he used he used to um, design everything in Final Fantasies from Final Fantasy one to uh, six, uh, and, and he's like a super artistic guy. He's like a really a real artist in my opinion. Like he goes, mm -hmm. it's like a guy that goes uh, from exhibition to exhibition. It's not like a video gaming profile. Um, he would just work until Final six, and then uh because the it was the generation jump to from 2d to 3d graphics they would need someone a bit more uh, i don't know uh, a bit more like con precise not precise just like less complex the guy's like really an artist right mm -hmm. he does that really uh so we would just like uh, keep them as kind of advisor and he's been in all final fantasies and, and i really really love his uh work um 
uh, what else? And that's uh, again, as I told you before, like the, it, they they're gonna all pop up when we uh, more. Um, well, uh, Moebius has been also a, a really really big influence, but I'm a fan of comic books, so I've read a couple of three of them. Uh, not not much more, but I've really um, stared a lot into his drawings for hours and like on the internet and everything because he's, a, he's just genius and um, another um, Japanese uh, one uh, it's uh, Katsuhiro Otomo is the creator of Akira a manga artist so he's like r both writer and like uh, painter and also I mean all the studio Ghibli I, I can't oh yeah uh, live without saying that because uh, I mean I guess <laughs> Um, I guess like half or like more of the blame about doing like colorful art is because of them probably because they would just keep this super cool balance between creepy and colorful and serious and humor and same happens and mm -hmm. some aspects in, in Dragon Ball that it's like serious but humor and like also really uh Sometimes it goes really creepy or like dark, and sometimes it's super lighthearted. It it also happens a lot in Breath of the Wild in Zelda, which is oh, yeah. like another huge influence. Without naming any artists, but more like the the saga itself, it just goes into like this good balance of cartoon being dark sometimes and like really colorful and uh, alive and like just like happy right and i always um i always have that as like a really good spot where where to like create worlds so that's i guess favorite yeah inspirations oh that's great yeah i mean i've been i, I don't know how you felt with the mono when you were younger i definitely had this big switch uh, like 10 years ago where when i was younger um I like what you said when they hired on Tetsuya Nomura for Final Fantasy VII yeah. on as like the lead yeah. concept designer. That's kind of the artist I grew up with being like, God, he's the best artist ever. And when I yeah. would look at Amano, I would be like, eh, it just doesn't make sense to me. And then literally yeah. 10 years ago, it like, it flipped. Where now I look at Amano and I think very similar to you, where it's like, he is an artist. Like, he is someone who can't be topped in what he does and how he creates works that are so imaginative and um so so unapologetically him you know like he's yeah. one of those artists where you would recognize it in like a half second of seeing it you know totally totally yeah i would feel uh, the same more or less um i would yeah nomura had like my favorite drawings right like when i was like a 12 year old for mm -hmm. example uh but yeah it felt like really really like fascinating the like especially like some of the uh, because Amano is very mature right he's like a very like mature artist that you would probably like more when you grow up but um, even with that there's some drawings with like characters full of like ornaments and gems mm -hmm. and, like really weird clothes that you know like the, the thing that was a bit harder to swallow from Amano when I was young was more the uh, more like I don't know um, less defined drawing like just more like movement yes. and things like that but yeah. then there were some character design that I would just like what is this the I don't know the the sword is half red and yellow in weird mm -hmm. patterns and it's like I can't even tell the material of the sword please I love it thank you it's yeah. like too much, right? It's like, oh, this is, raises so much questions, so many questions that uh, I love it, right? Well, like talking with you, I, I think I'm realizing uh, it's like an artist that you mat you have to, basically it's like a fine wine. When As a kid, yeah. you take a step, you're like, I look, like I'm not as into this as like this candy that kind of Nomura gave us. And it's like, you know, it's still yeah. good. But then now that I'm older, like you can really like swirl the wine and you're like, yes, like all these flavors and <laughs> you take yeah. this sip and you're like, no, this is much of your time out of your day to talk. No, no, me. no, no, it's, it's fine. Um, so the last one was one that actually came from Instagram and is how do you approach color? Um, 
<laughs> okay, so there's <laughs> two there's two ways. Loaded question, two, I know. Yes, <laughs> two clear ways. Um, the first one is the shortest is, <laughs> and uh, and ask her, hey, please, can you help me with this? Is this a good palette? Am I doing this right? Right. That's the short answer, but I guess um, it doesn't apply. Um, so the way I approach color in like now, and I've been like, I've been putting a lot of that, those restrictions we were saying, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the, okay, how, how to say it? So when you have a pencil drawing, right? You have one thing to do. And of course there's like, you, you go in that pencil technique and there's like a lot of things that you can do, but you basically decided to use one pencil, yeah. right? One. Uh, but if I, of course, you decided to go black and white because you're using a pencil. But if I give you now a pencil, a pen, like, I don't know, 20 different pens to you, like specifically that you use a lot of pencil, and yeah. I tell you that you have to use them, like mix them, you you probably get lost a bit, right? It's like, yeah, but it's so many things, right? So what's the problem with color? And it sounds like a joke that is like, we have all of them available from the beginning it's too much right it's like what can i do i have like i don't know millions of color mm -hmm. colors especially in digital i love them all i want to use them all sorry you can't or you can but you know it's easy to get lost in between it's oh, like same sure. as a, of a like pool of giant uh, brushes so first thing i'll do is I try to pick a dominant one, right? It's like, yeah, um, if you show this illustration to a friend and you go like just one second and you just remove it, it's like <laughs> the friend has to be able to say, yeah, that's the blue and yellow illustration. So that's a good sign. It's just like you've been um, putting some restrictions on you and not going crazy. Um, yeah. And then perfect exercise of dominant color because everything is blue, but it's also a bit boring, right? So then after picking a kind of main theme uh, for the drawing, you, you start like introducing uh, more colors. And it's to me, it, that's an easiest way to approach color than the other way around, because it's easier to know when to stop. But when mm -hmm. you have a mess full of a lot of colors, it's, it's really complex to know what's not working. Because the, the problems in, in drawing usually is that you know that it's not working, but you don't know why. It's like, yeah, I don't like this and I can't fix it. <laughs> yeah. I don't I need someone else that tells me, Hey Danny, this is so this hand is broken. You have to change it. Oh, that's it. Okay, thank you. But with course, if you go from simple to complex, let's say, uh mm -hmm. just pick like two, three colors, but or five, but you have to have in mind which one, like the main drawing is mostly red. Okay. And then you would introduce probably complementary and some accents and like you see what effects that is having yeah. in the drawing. Like uh, using a complement complementary is like the same thing as you do when you put a golden accent, right? It's like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch that point really fast because it's it's actually shiny right so you would mm -hmm. just see that you would test that putting a little bit of green on a red painting it would literally guide your eye to that point and it's like okay i understand a bit more now but i would start from simple to complex not the other way around oh that's great yeah because i think you're right i think the more that you um, look at color through a smaller scope, the easier it is to then work with those colors and then understand why they work well together versus being basically handed a million colors. Be like, okay, well, yeah. go with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. It's, it's really, really hard to put together. That's why we love so much. I think I love, but it's a common feeling uh, enough to say like we love so much when people use a lot of colors and the image still makes sense. Like whenever you see those Mm -hmm. those uh, color keys from like Pixar or things like that. It's, it's super hard to be bold and saturate everything and it, it keep 
an image that is uh, pleasant to the eyes. Like, I guess, Danny, I want to thank you again so much for joining me on this interview. I mean, like I've been kind of saying throughout this, you're definitely one of those artists that me and my friends mention a lot um, when we talk about like who is continuing to inspire us and whose work continues to be just something that we all can look at and uh, take notes from of like, this is the type of artist we want to be. And you always seem to be very daring and brave and bold and uh, something that I think a lot of artists don't have, which is confidence. So it, it's just something that has been really beaming from your work um, in the in the whole five years that I've been watching and looking at your work. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much again for taking the time to do this with me. It's just so wonderful because you both seem like just so uh, you, you both seem like very confident people and I feel like you'll you'll complement each other very well. And yeah. it's been really cool to, to see, especially um, you guys kind of bounce off each other's style from time to time. And it's funny that you said that you do the color palettes to, to be, to see if she uh, yeah, it approves happens. it or not. <laughs> happens all the time, yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> thanks, thanks to you, Tim, and thanks to you guys. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. I'm super, super happy to to have been done this, and yeah, it's also really pleased to meet you because I also didn't meet you, and I've been also following you for. I know, I've been, years, I've been so, so excited <laughs> to talk to you. <laughs> it's so it's so cool to meet you, uh, and yeah, I don't know, like really, really thanks a lot, and thanks for all the people that has been joining. Uh, I guess you're gonna say that now, but. Whatever. No, you, you took it. No, that was good. That was good. All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming to watch this. And uh, yeah, I guess I just want to say one more thank you and then we'll cut it out. So thank you again, Danny.